that my name is Scott Simon, and I'm associate professor of in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology at the University of Ottawa. And um, I just published this book last year. It's called Sejek uh, Balai, L'Autochtonie Formosan dans tous ses états, at the University of Laval Press in Quebec. Um, I guess the name of it, if we translate it into English, would be Sejek uh, Balai, which is Sejek. Uh, or Drugu is the same 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 language basically it means real people and then the subtitle means uh, Formosan indigeneity and in all of its states and it's a bit idiomatic in French um, because it means it was kind of a play on words it means uh, um, the many states so the many conditions or many ways of looking at indigeneity and then it also refers to the state as being Gojia the, the nation state and so that's why we've got the picture here of the Japanese, and then this has also the flag of the ROC. So, in its many states would be the Japanese, and then the ROC states. The, the content basically is uh, it's based on research that I did in in Taiwan from 2004 to 2007, and I worked in three different villages then. Um, I started out by asking the question, "What does uh, development mean?" And so that's why there's a chapter, chapter six here on uh, development and community associations because every village has its community development association. But that's only chapter six because working through uh, three different communities, I found that development in these Aboriginal communities is very much of a uh, an arena for a political competition, and so I had to. Uh, you know, start with other things, and um, anthropology is very holistic, so I started out with uh, an explanation of uh, Les Autochtones for Monzon, so looking at the, the social situation, kind of a sociology of where they fit into Taiwan. And then the second chapter, I explore uh, Formosa as part of Oceania. And then I get into more contemporary issues, looking at how the uh, the Sechek, like other pe peoples in Taiwan, lost their sovereignty because of the history of, of colonialism. But the Sejek were in the central mountains, and so they were among the last people to be subdued by an external state. And so I talk about that, and then uh, land systems, uh, and how they lost a lot of land to such people as the Taroko National Park and Asia Cement. And through that, there was a creation of uh, certain elites who got involved in politics. And so there's a chapter on elections and what elections mean in those communities. And then the uh, development and community associations. And you know, I found that development is uh, often a discourse that politicians use, that they, they promise to bring development to communities. And, um, and then I talk about more contemporary issues as well, such as the rectification of names, something you don't. And then the... Uh, question of autonomy because that's been a very hot issue in Taiwan in recent years that Aboriginal peoples would like to have some kind of autonomous regions and then finally I talk about international experiences and not necessarily the work of indigenous peoples at the United Nations although that's very important but more about people to people exchanges as well and so in the end the conclusion is that the whole concept of being indigenous is really in reference to a relationship with the state. Um, they had autonomy in the past because the government, there was no state. And so they were a stateless people living on an island without a state and they were living quite fine. Um, the state was an imposition from outside. We, we can't go back. And so the idea I think is that they're trying to find a way to negotiate a better position for themselves within the state. But in the, in the book here, I, I start with an archaeology of autonomy. And actually, the idea, zi zi, autonomy, has been something that they've been talking about for a very long time. And right after the uh, Japanese left, uh, the Zhou tribe, Gao Yisan, was one of the first to suggest having autonomous regions. And then the government also was talking about local autonomy. And so the word has been around for a long time. The ideal that they have now, and I think it, a lot of it is very similar to what you see in mainland China, having a zi zi chu, 
And the idea is that you could somehow combine all of the Taroko or all of the Sejek or all of the Atayal or Amis tribes of villages into one big territorial tribe. And the word tribe is very problematic, but they, they want to call that in some kind of a, you know, and so that's kind of the idea that, that the social movement is working towards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the uh, the Sejek are they're kind of, they're special. I think if you're looking for something that's very specific to the Sejek, I think uh, the important thing is that they often refer to Gaya, and I think that the other tribes don't do that. Um, Gaya is often translated as being the sacred law, the ancestral law, or the traditional law, customary law, and it's something that people are very much aware of. Uh, Usually it refers to what you cannot do, and so, but it's often referred to in the absence of somebody who breaks one of the rules of Gaia. They say, Unga Gaia, so no Gaia. Um, it's often talked about in, in daily life in terms of you're not supposed to have uh, extramarital affairs and so forth, um, but also in terms of property relations. Uh, so, if you, for example, you sell land that your ancestors cultivated, that's considered to be a violation of Gaia. And often, traditionally, they would make me make a sacrifice of a pig. So, you know, in the past, uh, last year I came to Taiwan for three months. And I worked in Hualien, in Fushuzhun, and went up to two, two, for two weeks into the Taroko National Park. There's a village up there that's called Skada, which I, I love to visit that place and spend time there. And then this year for three months in Nanto, and I'm working more on traditional ecological knowledge. And I think that one of the issues that I've picked up on is the issue of hunting and trapping. And what's interesting is that the uh, basic law on indigenous people says that the indigenous peoples have the right to hunt and fish for uh, purposes of culture and subsistence. It's legal for them now to register the homemade hunting rifles with the local police. So hunting with rifles is pretty much legal now. But I think that the real issue is that trapping is still completely illegal. And uh, it's mostly the older men who do hunting, to, hunt, to do trapping. And, you know, it's not that, it's, it's so all you, older. Do you think that if it was legal, uh, it, was, it would still be done in a, how to say, way, way or, wise or safe way? Because well, I think that it would be done in a safer way if it were legal. Yeah, yeah. Because then you could actually have courses on how to trap 